So thank you very much, colleagues, for all of that. Um, let us take a pulse of the room. We've got now 199 participants uh, that, are, that are going to be thinking and, and participating in, in the chat, etc. Let us go to our exercise uh, on the Mintimeter uh, and, and see uh, what your thoughts are, and what your priorities are and your concerns to make sure that we deal with that also in, in the next uh, uh, um, round table that is going to be uh, facilitated by Anna Claudia Rosbach from, uh, from Cities Alliance. So colleagues, who is going to run us through the Mintimita? So thank you very much, Amelia. Today it's going to be me running you through this Mintimeter consultation. So thank you very much, dear participants, for being here today with us. I will now want to ask you to go to menti.com and introduce the code 298735 for us to start with our Mentimeter consultation. So the first question that we would like to ask you all has to do with identifying what you believe are the main challenges faced in informal contexts following the outbreak of the COVID-19 crisis. So please participants, we encourage you to answer with just one word in English to enhance the results coming out from the word cloud. So I think that we can, we can already see some responses coming up. And I think it's really interesting how they keep changing. Amelia, what do you think? They keep changing. <laughs> well, but, but I, I still think that there, are, that, that there are clear priorities there. I mean, livelihood, hunger, uh, so it's related to food system, to, to also sanitary safety and, and to the informal economy. There are things that are coming up very strongly and that you could relate to each other indeed. And, and I think some of those are going to be addressed uh, certainly, certainly today. I think most of them, look, food, food scarcity, the distancing issue, housing is not coming up as such, but it's part of that uh, difficulties uh, with distancing and livelihood as well, uh, and jobs. And jobs, jobs, yes. A very big one. So let us go to the next one, Ainara. Okay. So this next question has to do with rating the level of implementation of the following initiatives regarding addressing COVID in informal contexts. So the answers go from initiatives that are not at all being implemented towards initiatives that are being widely implemented. And they have to do with halting evictions in informal settlements, with initiatives that are based in collaboration between subnational and national governments, ensuring the water and sanitation provision in informal contexts, providing rental or economic support measures, and mainstreaming a gender approach in responses to the crisis. All very challenging measures to take. Eh? I mean, certainly, um, I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't know if, if, if we are answering those from experience or only from what we fear is happening. <laughs> uh, but I certainly, I, I certainly see that uh, that evictions is a very is, is a very big problem. And then some of the basic public service delivery, like like water and sanitation. Although my sense is, from many of the stories that you, that you are going to be hearing today, uh, a lot of the efforts of our constituency are going to those very concrete things. So uh, providing, uh, providing some sanitary uh, facilities, uh, providing water, um, et cetera. Uh, the more longer term ambitionary uh, measures that should be taken uh, are harder to, to put together. And well, uh, subnational and national government uh, discussions on this are, are also a, a very big challenge from, from my perspective. I, I think all of the spheres of government are very overwhelmed right now. So it's, it's all pretty balanced, you see. It, it all, yeah, remains in, in, in a very big challenge. But indeed, you can show there that service provision is what we do best. Uh, right now, that, that kind of concrete uh, measures. Absolutely. And yeah, and hopefully that comes up in the cases we will present today. Let's go to the next one, Ainara. Okay, next and last question 
is a challenging question because it asks participants to try to identify what would be needed for such measures to actually be implemented, further implemented and consolidated. Please feel free to answer with as many words as you want as they will show up in the screen. in a scrolling fashion. So we, we can already start seeing some of the answers that participants are giving. Mm -hmm. There's appropriation of land, gender, mainstreaming, devolution, a strong local government. I have to say that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Data. More collaboration, political will and economic sufficiency, many of these are related. Recognize the collective ownership, indeed, commitment to decentralize the power and finance. Plans. Yeah, a strong institutions partnership. Look, we're going to keep this and we will make sure that we include it in the, uh, in the, in the briefing and that, that we share it with you. So uh, if, if you want to continue uh, providing ideas, please do, because we, we do use these things for our uh, mid and long-term work. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, with, with uh, this, this picture, the picture of the room, and this is 202 people now, and, and the frame, the institutional frame that we have provided as co-organizers co now, I, I give the floor to the to the first round table, to the facilitator of this round table, uh, Anna Claudia. It's a pleasure to to see you again in this context, and thank you for uh, for helping us shape uh, this session as well. Good luck to you. Timing is always an issue, but I know you will do fine.